Welcome to another edition of my Fireside Chat. You know, statistics and numbers are a driving force behind sports. We all know that. Earned run average, shooting percentage, shots on goal, rushing yards, and other figures often prove measuring sticks for success. Here are some numbers about the National Collegiate Athletic Association. NCAA President Mark Emmert is the fifth chief executive. More about him in a minute. There are 308 Division II universities and colleges, including Delta State. 52,500 athletes compete each year for 90 championships in 24 different sports across three divisions throughout the United States and Canada. Half a million college athletes from 19,500 teams are among our NCAA divisions. And $5 million has been raised by student athletes and their advisory committees around the country through NCAA for Make-A-Wish Foundation, granting more than 600 wishes to needy kids. When I was inaugurated at Delta State in 2013, I implemented our Distinguished Speakers Lecture Series to bring highly successful individuals to campus to share their stories with our students, our faculty, our staff, and our community. Colloquial guests have included a Supreme Court Justice, a U.S. Poet, Poet Laureate, a Governor, two Senators, and two Fortune 500 CEOs, among many others. Our guest today is no exception to the long list of notable speakers. Joining me today is Dr. Mark Emmert, President of the NCAA. We're pleased to have you on our campus and thank you for addressing our colloquium. My pleasure, good to be here. And thank you for talking with our students and our athletes on campus. We're most proud to have you here to visit with them. Well, it was great fun and, and I really enjoyed my time with them. They're an impressive bunch. Well, it is great. Tell us a little bit about what you delivered in the way of a message to our colloquium. Well, I think first of all, what I want to do and tried to do was was to impress people uh, with the facts that you just st you just cited. You know that the NCA is an incredibly diverse organization, including 1,100 schools and and those almost half million students you were talking about, and that the focus is really on just that—that that these are students. They're on these campuses, all of our campuses across the country, to get an education, to play sports at the highest level they're capable of, and to do that in a context that everybody thinks is fair and and balanced and that it, it, it provides them with opportunities that they would never have before in, in their lives. Uh, a lot of people tend to think about us just as uh, March Madness or a great football championship in FBS Division I and in fact it's an incredibly diverse organization with lots and lots of uh, opportunities. It is. You know, uh, many strides have been made by the NCAA and you and your colleagues and your wonderful staff in, in Indianapolis over the years. and. Since you took office, uh, of what programs would you say you are most proud? Things that you all have done that have really been uh, a sea change for the NCAA and for the well-being of our student athletes around the country? Yeah, we tried very hard to get the focus of all of the members onto student success. And not just student success, meaning on the playing field, but to make sure that we were doing everything we can to help these young men and women graduate and launch their lives and their careers successfully. And we've watched in all three divisions over the past eight years, every year, just like clockwork, an increase in graduation rates. The mm -hmm. students are performing really well. We keep raising expectations and standards, keep raising our support levels for them and the opportunities for them to do good things in the classroom, and they step right up and do it. Mm -hmm. So number one, I'd, I'd clearly say the academic success of these students is just remarkable. Secondly, I'm really proud of what's been going on in each of the three divisions to promote the health and well-being of student athletes. The, the focus that we have now on uh, bringing science and medicine to bear on, on helping them be successful athletes, but as importantly, to help them uh, finish up their collegiate careers with the kind of health and well-being that we want everybody to leave your campus with. And uh, that's made some really great strides. And, and then finally, I think we've, we've had a big impact on helping people understand that the NCA isn't about an organization in Indianapolis or any one person. It's about these universities and colleges running college sports together for the betterment of, of young men and, and women and giving them a chance to do something that very few people get a chance to do and that's compete at a college, get a college degree, finish up their school and go out and launch their lives. There you go. That's very, very important. You know, uh, you had a chance to visit with our uh, coaches and our athletic department staff and with our student athletes on campus. Uh, what has been your messages to them? What uh, sort of things have you imparted to them during your visit here? 
Well, first of all, I want to listen to them because I want to hear what's going on in their lives, what's, what's inside the NCAA, all of our policies and rules is, is working for them, that's helping the coaches be successful with their students, and similarly allowing uh, your wonderful students here to, to have the kind of experience that they wanted. And uh, my first impression of your, of your students is spectacular. You know, they're, they're a great bunch of young men and women. They're incredibly proud to be part of the Delta State community. They bragged about that a lot. They're having really, really good experiences. Uh, so wh what I was trying to get both of those groups to understand is, first of all, this is their association that, that they, students, coaches, everybody alike, have an opportunity to shape and frame the rules, that, that there's not anybody that sits back at a desk and makes up rules and passes policies or procedures. It's, it's the member schools themselves, and they do that by listening to and talking with and advocating uh, on behalf of the students and the coaches the kinds of things they want. And, and, and most people find that a little bit uh, startling because they, they have a complete misperception of mm -hmm. what the association mm -hmm. is. Secondly, I emphasize with them, just as I, I did in my talk, that this is about uh, having sports occur in the context of, of higher education. We're, we're all in the human development business here. We're all trying to take these young men and women, they come onto your campus, they come as freshmen, you greet them, you welcome them, and then they go out the other end and they commence their life. That's hence commencement, right? And so we, we need that transition, including their sports experience, to be one about developing them and making them better and preparing them for life. It's about that great opportunity and, and that we're here to shape that. You have been in higher education for decades and uh, now head an organization that's so important to not only college athletics but to higher education itself, working with a number of other constituents around the country, different organizations. From your perspective, what would you say is a crystal ball comment or two about the future of collegiate sports? Well, I, I have spent my entire adult life uh, in higher education, and, and I've watched uh, a lot of things change, as, as have you over those, those decades. But when I look out 10, 20 years, it's, 20 is pretty hard to project out that far. But uh, I first of all think that college sports in America will continue to thrive and be very successful it's become an integral part of American society. It's something that so many of us in, in America just gravitate to. We love it. We love the students participating in sport. We love the pageantry of it, the passion of college sports. It's, it's going to remain with us for a long, long time. I think we're going to see a continued emphasis on the, the student and him or herself, you know, that this is about, again, developing those students and encouraging them to be more and more successful. I think we're going to see continued uh, extraordinary performances uh, uh, on the courts and on the fields. The, every time there's a record broken, I keep thinking, well, that's it. Nobody can, and then along comes some, mm -hmm. some person, and then they perform even better with these jaw-dropping uh, performances that they put in. I think we'll probably see the rise of new sports as our, as our campuses and our country becomes increasingly diverse and we bring in more people from all around. Uh, we're already seeing the rise of soccer, you know, a game that when you and I were young was played but not very popular and now of course it's become a global game, it's growing in popularity, basketball is growing in popularity, we're seeing a number of women's sports become really popular and starting to gain the kind of audiences that women's basketball gets in, in volley, women's volleyball and softball. And, uh, I, I think we'll, we'll watch the emergence of those, emergence of those trends. And I hope we're going to see that uh, a, a, an increasingly diverse set of people participate in, in sport and especially at the intercollegiate level as we broaden out that sport base. So football and basketball, they're always going to be the dominant American sports at the college level, but we're seeing a, a, a broader cross-section now. And that brings with it a lot of exciting things. Right. Um, and, and so sport will remain uh, an integral part of American higher education. But it'll look different. It'll shape itself and, uh, over the years, and, and new, fun, exciting things will emerge. There you go. The NCAA has been at the forefront of, uh, and a solid defender of the uh, amateur collegiate model. Uh, there have been a number of assaults and collateral attacks uh, against that model over the last several years. Uh, do you feel good about the future of that model, and will we continue it? Yeah, I do. I, I feel very good about it. But that doesn't mean that it's not constantly under assault, as you said. And, uh, I hope we can get some of the legal context settled and resolved in the coming uh, months and years because we, we really need to get that 
done and out of the way uh, going forward. You know, student athletes uh, are not employees of universities. They're, they're here as, as students, they're here to play their sport, they're here to be a part of this university community. Uh, that's very different than hiring somebody. Recruiting somebody to come to your campus isn't like putting an ad in a newspaper and going out and hiring somebody to come play sports. Uh, it, it was 120 years ago that actually was done. People were actually hiring people to come play on their teams. Mm -hmm. And the NCAA was created in large part to say, no, no, this is about students playing students, not about professionals playing professionals. Uh, and we've got to constantly emphasize that. That doesn't mean we can't and shouldn't always be reevaluating what we can do to support our students as students uh, on our campuses. We have to do that. But when we, should we ever move over to a place or be forced to move over to a place where these uh, young men and women are deemed employees, that, that probably is the end of college sports, certainly as we know it, uh, and it would be a, a, a sad state of affairs, and I think most people understand that. It would be. Well, we appreciate very much your coming to Delta State, speaking to our colloquium and to our student athletes. Thank you for what you do for our student athletes Thank and you. for all you do at NCAA. Thanks for being with me today. My pleasure. It's been, a great, been a great day. You bet. In other news on campus, we have reached the midpoint of the fall semester, midterms. Good luck to our students during midterm exams and all the projects they have underway. The new Miss Delta State University pageant will be crowned, or Miss University will be crowned on Thursday. The pageant itself will be at 7 p.m. at the Bologna Performing Arts Center. The Wiley Planetarium will be showing Robot Explorers 3D on Friday at 6 o'clock. Admission is $7 for adults, $5 for children younger than 12. Seniors and anyone else with an OCA card also get the same break. To keep up with all of our news, as usual, just go to our website at deltastate.edu. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you the next time on another edition of Fireside Chat.